and we'll jump into Neverwinter Nights. Let me send this off real quick and we will get going. Uh, credit for that trailer to Lestat and uh, Mr. Bruce, who are, I think, both in here. Bruce handling the the music, and then Lestat taking care of the just amazing graphics that were on there. It was pretty incredible. So, um, a few things to go over before I jump into some of the inf uh, information today. So there's obviously the chat that will be, uh, we will throw a, a minor slow mode on it just so we can make sure we catch some of the questions that come through. Uh, they will be pinned, so I will try and answer uh, whatever I can towards the end. Um, and anything that I can't answer, uh, I'll try and make sure it gets covered on the developer update later in June. So um, that all being said, we have had a very busy uh, year plus since the server went offline. Uh, for those that played during our kind of five, six month, uh, I'll just call it an intro period, there's basically been everything. Um, oh, is the video private? I will fix that. Just a moment. I am correcting that now. That one should be public. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. Okay. It should be set. I had two on there, but uh, they should be both set for public now. So um, if they're not, I will fix that later on. So just as a, kind of a quick recap for uh, what's gone on over the last year plus, uh, pretty much everything inside the server has been adjusted and changed and tweaked. Um, we did kind of a reset from a staff standpoint on the server um, back I want to say it was around April of last year, we uh, sort of reset and kind of went to um, back down to uh, Callie or uh, Calliope and myself, and then we sort of realigned what the, the vision was moving forward, and uh, we, so we've sort of made headway uh, since that point. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that from a systems perspective, it, it's going to look very, very different in-game. Uh, many of the things that would rely on uh, let's just say like DM or application um, requirements are, are no longer, that's no longer valid. So things like applications, what we aim to do is try and build everything in mechanically. Uh, so that way, if, you know, if there's some element that we were concerned about from whether it's a role play standpoint or something else for a particular class, we tried to make sure that that was incorporated through uh, mechanics rather than requiring uh, an application process, which uh, you know, obviously applications are subjective in nature, so, you know, there's there's good and bad to them, and some servers have success with them. Uh, I think overall, it just it ended up being something that wasn't uh, hyper useful for us. We would have applications that were submitted that, that uh, you know, maybe were built really well, and then it didn't really come out or come to fruition in, in play. So um, th they've all been uh, completely scrapped, and we continue to try and uh, think of alternative ways to avoid going down kind of that road again. Um, from, it, it, I mean, really what's listed on our wiki, there's there's a lot of just narrative pieces that have been built in over the last year to, to better support the, the story of the server. There's, um, you know, actual mechanical faction support uh, that is built in. There is uh, player housing. There's player merchants. Um, there's a few things that I'll, I'll go through today uh, that are that are pretty unique, um, or if they're not entirely unique, they're at least unique in terms of how we implemented them. Um, so it, it's hard to really touch on everything. I mean, we've got new classes, we've got new um, approach to just uh, experience in the server. We're I, I'm in the process of of overhauling uh, the loot and profession um, processes as we kind of finish off this month. So. Uh, really just a, a lot of changes, and I, I would pretty much say that the experience uh, when we do launch is going to be completely different than the last one. Um, so if if there were things that maybe anyone had gripes with the previous run, I'd, I'd recommend uh, giving it a shot when we do launch, um, or even jumping in during open beta and just kind of messing around with, with seeing how things are looking. Um, 
Well, that all said, let me switch over to my notes real quick. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I'll cover a few of the systems. Uh, I expect them all to work, but this is, of course, a uh, live stream during testing. So if something explodes, then it is what it is, and I'll try and just be flexible with that. Uh, afterwards, I'll go through uh, some of the just updates on beta and what uh, kind of what our, our plan is from a timing standpoint with the different weeks that are going to be going on inside of beta. Um, and then we'll have Q&A, so anything that might come up during the uh, during the stream, I will try and uh, get to those and make sure that questions are answered to the best of my ability. So uh, one of the things that we did recently announce is uh, the, the name override system, which is uh, pretty interesting. I, I don't know if we've seen too many uh, servers that use this, this style of, um, of a system in game. And so for those that haven't seen it, uh, if, if one of the devs wouldn't mind just linking the wiki entry when they have a, a moment, but basically every player character you come across is going to have um, kind of a generic name when you see them. And so you, you have the ability to uh, select a, like what that name override is initially. So if, you know, if I want to be considered some kind of default name, then I'll be able to select what that is. Um, but once I encounter that person and as you uh, talk to them, then you're able to basically use a command to flag that person a particular um, a particular name. So I'll, I'll demo that here in just a moment. Um, but that will kind of, that integrates with some of our other systems and show, I'll showcase those later. So I'm going to go ahead and share over to Neverwinter Nights real quick and we will go from there. All right, so uh, you've got one player here. So hopefully, everyone can see this. Um, the I did catch that question. So it, it is a, an NWNX function. Uh, we just kind of tweaked it a little bit, and it's it's kind of one of the things that you can't really start halfway through a PW's life like life cycle just because of I mean how it how it functions. So. Um, basically, the, the way that it works is you have so I've got this player character right here that's titled Red Haired Stranger. So that is a name that they assign to themselves. And so I'll, uh, I have to take myself off push to talk in a second, but I will essentially use it. I'm going to see them and then that name is going to be uh, persistent. So across logins, across whatever that's going to be. Oh, is it not showing up? Is that a fun Discord function? Let me let me restart it. Is that any better? Okay. All right. So I will. I'll I'll kind of re repeat some of what I just said. So I've got a character right here. They have their default name set. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll basically just showcase swapping that name. So I'm going to use a command, and then I'll select the name that I'm going to use, and then I'll, I'll attach it to them. So it's pretty much as simple as that. So that's that's literally all that needs to happen. And then that this name is all that you see. So no other characters will see what you assign that name. Um, you You can do that for any player. Uh, there was some concern when we were first. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I can answer some of these questions as they're coming up. So basically, it creates a cursor once you uh, type in the name, and then you can select the target. And so basically, you select the player, and then you're able to assign them the name. Um, and it's it works extremely seamlessly. There was a little bit of concern from the standpoint of you know how how long does it take to assign it. And especially earlier on when there's a lot of players that you haven't met before, um, it, it might seem daunting, but the process is pretty pretty quick. And it's also a little bit more realistic because you're not going to know everyone's name to begin with. Um, so that said, it's it's very it's as simple as that. Uh, when you do go in through the process of, of setting up your names, it's uh, there'll be just a command for that and you'll have some dialogue. Uh, there is a, a minor issue with some of our like dialogue with the character right now, so I'm not going to demo that. 
Um, but for the most part, it's it's going to be very simplistic. If you don't uh, if you don't have a default name, it just defaults you to adventure, and that's pretty much it. So um, yeah, I mean that's that's basically that system, and it's it's pretty simplistic. Um, so the the nice thing, which is what I'll talk about next, is the uh, the disguise system. And so disguise is going to uh, integrate with with this pretty easily. Um, I have this other person up on my my phone, so I'm going to try and switch him into a disguise. And and assuming everything works properly, it should adjust his name on his end. So uh, bear with me just a second, and I will give that a shot. There we go. So basically, I, I sent the command on my phone uh, in the text, and he had set his, his disguise name uh, to money. And so now that is showing his money. So there's nothing that I did on my end, uh, but basically the name updated. Um, and then you, for this particular character, I'll talk about this here pretty soon. Uh, the appearance will change uh, just with the current setup. His There's nothing to swap it to at the moment, but I'll explain that here pretty soon. So um, when you do go into disguise, it's going to be pretty much as simple as using a command. Uh, you'll be able to go in there. There's going to be skill checks, and we'll have a, a more in-depth uh, wiki page for uh, for disguise here by the end of the month. But it's going to be a really simplistic process. The the, the approach to uh, like beating the disguise is going to be examining. So when you go and examine someone, you'll be able to know whether or not they. Um, whether you were successful with the disguise or whether there was, uh, you know, something in, like kind of odd about the person. And uh, the way that it'll work is the the name will be returned. So if I go, actually, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and try it right now. So if I go and examine this person, which I'm going to do. So you can see here something is amiss with this individual. And so I with that, so mine was a failure in terms of the uh, the spot role, which this will be explained inside the wiki. So I, I didn't change his name, his description, which if it's edited would be uh, wouldn't have returned. But then I had a sense motive check against his, which is basically giving me that indication of like some something's off with the character. Um, so that's that's kind of the the general context. So we'll go through. Uh, so for the spot and sense motive, that'll be covered in the wiki article. But basically, there's going to be two checks. Uh, spot is checking if you identify that the person is clearly disguised. Sense motive is if something is off about the person in terms of their behavior. And so if if you succeed the spot, that's when you actually see through the disguise. It's only seen through for you, so it would return to, if I were successful, it would return back to the name that I gave him originally, um, but because I failed, it stayed the same. So that's that's pretty much it from a disguise standpoint. I know there's a few questions coming up, and so I will I'll cover those um, a little bit later on, and we'll we'll jump through some of this. So uh, the next piece that I will go into, and we'll come back to some of the dis disguise and naming portions because they're those two systems and the one that I'm about to talk about are, are all connected, um, and I'll give you an indication of of why. So uh, what. What we have and what we've shown for a while is just obviously a lot of new uh, head models. We have a, a ton of content from that standpoint. So if any of you see uh, Goldberry or, or I think it's pronounced Rouladre, but I'm probably butchering that. Um, they've done uh, just a, an amazing job with, with custom heads that are going to be unique to TDN. So all of those, um, well, really the way it'll work is we'll have kind of the default heads. And so I'm going to... Uh, I'll try and talk. Actually, I can probably just take off push to talk. Give me just a second and remove that. Okay, hopefully everyone can still hear me. So uh, what I'll go through is this will make it easier for me to demo without having to hold down a button. So we have um, a custom tailor system that's written. So for those of you that were here before, you probably remember like a thousand issues with our Taylor system. Um, uh, there were TMI issues, and I'm not supporting the idea that ours won't have any issues ever, but uh, we have a brand new one that was written specific for TDN to take advantage of uh, some of our updates. So uh, it's pretty standard dialogue. You have adjustment metric, which I'll talk about here pretty soon. 
but you have the typical stuff you have the head swaps you have hair swap hair color skin all that kind of stuff so um that's all in here and then you can kind of swap through just different options and most of these are probably people have seen to some degree before um but they'll show up on both the tailor and the player so the main point i'm going to speed through some of these uh just to kind of give a general overview but the interesting aspect is as you get i think it's actually quite a ways in as you get towards it, I want to say it's the 80s. Oh, nope. Here we go. All right, so you'll get towards later options that, as you can see, these are missing hairstyles and hair. So what we've done is we've gone through and basically made a system that allows you to customize your character to a greater degree. So you can go to find uh, the head you want. So let's say we want to go with this one. Uh, you can. We're not going to mess with the lip or skin color or anything like that, but you select uh, which head you want. You can go back to the main menu and then you can go to edit accessories and hair. So a few things that you can do here. So if we want to edit hair, we can go ahead and add next option. So you see it pop up up here and you can switch through a bunch of different, uh, just different options that are available. I mean, all these hairstyles you can basically just use for your character. Um, I'll show editing them in just a moment but you can select which one you want and as you can imagine some of this i have to uh work out like the dialogue process um so that way it's a little bit more seamless but you can move and scale so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this down so what's what that adjustment metric was earlier is basically how much you want to adjust so if you want to go like extremely granular uh you can get extremely granular if you want to um do more then you can do more it's it's completely up to you um, i set it to kind of per personally for me what i think is uh, a good value um, but you can do that and then the nice thing is so once you i'm going to kind of sloppily put this together but once you uh, select your hairstyle you can go back and swap heads still so you can pretty seamlessly jump between uh different different types of whether it's head options or whether it's the hair options or um, any of those so there's uh if you wanted to you can also rotate you can scale um obviously uh there's odd things that people could find a way to do with with some of the system but ideally we'll try and uh lean into people's hopefully more uh, serious judgment with these things so that way it's uh, a good approach um because trying to mitigate some of that is going to be more trouble than it's worth um, let's see. So I'll jump back to, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the hair, um, but I will go back and, uh, go through a few of these other pieces. So one of the other, other elements, which is great is, is fringe. And so what fringe does is it gives you more hair options to basically add some, like an additional level of, I guess, customization to the, the hairstyle itself. And so you can add different pieces. And so let, let me actually try and demo this together with the hair. So if we have this one, let me go back to the fringe and move this one down. So you can see, obviously I'm hastily attempting to do this, but you can scale it up so that way it fits properly. You can move it back a little bit. So that's basically um, how that that gets set so obviously i'm not spending a lot of time to get it looking perfect but just to give you an idea you can do so if you go to edit hair we can change the color so we're going to do next hair color previous hair color so you can swap between these and it changes the specific accessory that you're doing so you could basically have a different color hair and then a different color fringe uh you just want to make sure that i mean just from a sensible standpoint that they uh make sense from the color so um that's the those two combined so i will jump into some of the others so let's go ahead and remove the fringe we'll go ahead and remove the hair and then let's go ahead and jump to so some of the hat options it's kind of the same thing we don't have it in yet but it, eventually what's going to happen is uh if you equip a helmet you can kind of choose which one you default to and so if you want to um 
if you want to default to the helmet visual that's going to be available, you can do that. If you want to default to what you have selected, you can do that as well. Um, but basically, all these are, are options that you can basically swap to. Um, it's it's going to be a pretty uh, just exceptionally dynamic system that you're going to be able to use. So all these are in. All these can be dyed as well. Um, oh, the fringe is still on there. Maybe that broke. Oh, no, it got wrong. Okay. So uh, with the hat... You can change color and it's the same thing so you will need to do a little bit of um uh, trial and error with this but basically you have all the different options you have clock one leather one metal you have the, mi the miscellaneous are the tattoo options so it should restore what was on there before but basically you can go um to cloth and then it'll swap it over it is a little bit of a, a tricky system because for anyone that does coding um you basically have to it, it matches what your torso armor colors are and so you have to have torso armor color change and then get returned so um just something to, to keep in mind there you, your character is locked for about a second when you do the swap so that way there's no kind of weird funny business with with the armor swap outs so uh all, all of these colors can be changed um it's it's pretty simplistic to go through and it all is um, persistent. So that was kind of a tricky thing to, to deal with in code. Um, so basically that the hats will be options. There will also be helmet options. Let me see if I can jump back. I think there was an issue with helmet. So I wanna, there's a possibility this might not work, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, no, there we go. Um, so yeah, same thing. So, so like I mentioned earlier, you can have, we'll be able to have a, or we'll eventually have a command where you, decide what default visual you use either you'll default to your item appearance um, that you have or you can choose to default to the accessory appearance of the helmet or of the, the hat whatever your preference is so that will be left up to you um, obviously it might be a little bit odd if you have like a, a really strong i guess helmet or something and you have some kind of like cloth hat on there, but we'll leave that up to players to, to kind of figure out and decide. So um, let's see, was there anything else? I think that was pretty much it. So that that's the general concept, really, when it comes to how this system is going to work. You can, um, again, you know, move, move and scale. You can change things around. You can rotate. Um, all that is available from an options perspective. Uh, the the great thing about how the heads were made, uh, which again is just goes back to how how great a job that was done, is for pretty much all intents and purposes, the different items should be able to fit uh, essentially seamlessly on all the different heads. Obviously, if you have a hairstyle on there, that's going to give you some problems. So you'll want to uh, take that into consideration. And the goal is that, especially during you know open beta and then during the launch time frame, that we'll learn new kind of quality of life pieces uh, that we'll be able to add in and um, include in the system. So that way, you know, we we try and make it as enjoyable as possible. Um, each so one thing I w want to state is that each race has their own uh, accessories, and so you can see the options for human. Uh, there may be more that that come up later um but that like elves will have their own they have a circlet uh which they can select from dwarves have uh beards that they're able to choose from so that you can you can pretty much mix and match uh everything that you would like um in those different areas and it also ensures that you know there's kind of no really bizarre uh accessory options selected for like elves choosing a bunch of very human selections so each each race has different options um it's, it'll be nice to kind of have some of that uh, uh, disparity between the different races with just some of their typical kind of racial accessories and, and clothing. Now, um, what I will jump to is, let me see if I can do this properly. Uh, so let's remove the hat or the helmet and let's do hair. So what I'm going to showcase here is, is kind of part of the disguise system. And so how this is intended to work is I'm hearing a ton of Discord activities. So hopefully I'm not missing too much. But the way that the disguise system is going to work is it's going to integrate with the accessory system. And so uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and activate a disguise. Am I on as a DM right now? I think I might be. 
Hold on, guys. Let me try that again. Oh, there we go. Okay. For some reason, it didn't take the first time. Maybe I maybe I typoed it. Um, so as you can see, so I, I have the disguise system up. It took off the hair. And so what you can do from this point is you can go in here. You are given a, a, a notice that the changes that you make will only affect the disguise. And so what will happen is you can basically have a, a, a visual for your character, like standard, and then you can have a visual for what your disguise is. And so um, what you can do from a disguise standpoint is you can essentially have uh, you can you can't do racial disguises right now. We're not gonna we're not gonna lead with that particular part of the system. I don't know if we will eventually add that, um, but you can do gender disguises, and so you can do the same kind of thing. So let me I'll try and showcase that real quick. So as you swap back and forth, it should um, work pretty easily. So I just I just uh, disguised over to uh, another gender, and then you can basically select whatever you would like from that standpoint. And then when you swap back and forth, these. Oh wait, let's go back. So we'll choose options, and then you also have to mess with the um, the scaling properly. But the scaling work will persist uh, nor like piece to piece. And so if you have like basically with with the disguise piece, you're gonna have to get it set, but it's going to persist once you once you swap. So if you go and scale this or we don't want to scale, we want to oh, I do want to move let's move this backwards. So it just went up, but that was expected. Because you're setting basically the transform of the visual um, for your current disguise. So there you go. Obviously, I'm not spending a lot of time doing it. But then once you come back over here, you can end the disguise. It's going to swap you back. It'll swap back the other hairstyle that you had. And then you'll be pretty much good to go. So that's the general concept is that you'll be able to have just like essentially two different styles that you can swap between. Um, and then similar to before, uh, we, we have that option and with anything, and this is something that I'll, I'll kind of reiterate during the beta piece is, you know, everything that we're building in here is still work in progress. Um, some of the pieces may change. There may be, I mean, we may feel that it's really necessary to go to having some kind of racial disguise. We may not, we may keep the, the gender piece. We may not, um, some of those like kind of elements might shift and change it, it's still kind of based on you know general feedback from the community feedback from uh well not feedback but uh just you know perceptions from the development team on whether uh there's you know benefits to it if there's too much downside whether it's something that's manageable uh long term all those pieces are going to be important so um that all said, I mean, that, that is kind of the, the main highlights that, that I wanted to cover for some of the systems today. Um, I'll go through just some of the beta pieces and then I'll talk through some of the, the questions. I know there's been a, a ton of questions that have come in, so I'll try and answer some of those. Um, but those are some of the things that we're excited about. There's a lot more um, that's, that is already built and inside the server. Um, those that have been done like our closed beta testing, uh, huge thank you to them for the numerous hours that they spent uh, breaking everything. So that way we can try and get it fixed and taken care of. Um, but all, all of those pieces are really, uh, I think, setting us up uh, just really well for the future when we when we launch this. So uh, lots still to do, but um, I'll go ahead and just cover a few things and then I'll probably jump around in the server a little bit uh, and maybe showcase a few spots. Um, but let me talk about beta and then I'll try and go through some questions that, that are pinned and uh, we'll go from there. So um, with beta, a few things to expect. So I talked about the feedback piece. That is one of, if not the most important piece when it comes to beta is we want to make sure we get feedback. We want to understand, you know, what's working, what's not working. Um, we want to know, you know, what's appealing to people and, and not so much. So there might be elements that, you know, you're not fond of, which is perfectly fine. Um, so sharing, you know, just your perspective on that is good. Um, the the element that i'll just kind of caution is if you know the reality is, is if we don't see a lot of beta activity uh especially during open beta that's going to be rough because we'll have to 
we'll have to shift around development efforts to uh, refocus on like individually uh, testing out some of these pieces. So highly encourage you to jump in, um, even if it's a couple times a week as we sort of shift focuses throughout the the beta time uh, time frame. It would be much appreciated. Um, so let's see. There will be um, I, I will be doing some updates this week on the Discord just with uh, beta kind of on the horizon. So there will be a channel that has all the beta patch notes. Um, so those will be updated whenever we have kind of a new load in of, of details. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, I'll probably just use the same one I've been running for the closed beta. Um, it hasn't had an update in a while. That's partially just because of me not updating the notes. But um, there's been a bunch of things that have been added in as well. So. Uh, That'll all be set, and so ideally we'll be able to move forward pretty well. There, there is, um, there will be in-game uh, bug report and feedback commands, and actually I'll, I'll demo that real quick because it's pretty simplistic. Um, but you can basically just type in uh, exclamation point bug report, and then whatever you want to uh, report, test, we'll just test report. And so what what that does is it sends uh, a bunch of different information to the devs on like on you know what the body of that report was. It also sends um, the location of your character and, and a number of other things uh, to us, so that way we can try and drill down uh, w what the problem was and how we can fix it. And then feedback, I think feedback is the same thing. Yep, feedback is the same thing. So. Um, Basically, both those options are available. It's good to be able to differentiate between the two uh, because bug reports are obviously something that's broken. Feedback is you know, your subjective opinion on a particular system or issue, um, which are still, you know, we, we still want those. Those are still welcome, so long as they're respectful. Um, the updated schedule, so just to give everyone an idea of kind of how things are going to look uh, going into beta. So we, we, it kicks off this Saturday, uh, so 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, sorry if that's like, a, I don't know, 2 a.m. your time, but I just I need to be available to be able to try and fix things if something go, like blows up. Um, so the, the week of the 28th uh, is really just going to be general. So it's it's allowing people to kind of jump in, uh, experience things and, and do miscellaneous uh, dungeon runs, do you know whatever it is that you're kind of excited to, to look at. Um, and, and then each week after that, we're going to have uh, staged uh, sp specific dungeon runs for certain levels. So the week of the 5th, of July 5th, it's going to be levels 2 through 6, dun Dungeons and Feedback, uh, the 12th, 7 through 12, and then the 19th. Uh, it's going to be 2 through 18, uh, mostly because there's obviously more dungeons, kind of the, the early to mid range as opposed to the, the end range. So, um, and then towards the, uh, the week of the 26th, there's going to be just a, an overall systems review. I imagine, I mean, a, anyone that participates, you're still more than welcome to test whatever you want. Um, that's just those, those ones that are the topics that I mentioned are going to be just primarily the focuses that we'll have. Um, and then the week of August 2nd and beyond is kind of uh, to be determined. Uh, we, it, it really depends on like what you know where we're at at that point just from a kind of holistic developments perspective we'll have uh, a good idea of the workload that's left to clean up some of the systems if there are some severe issues that that exist um, and hopefully by really by that week so the week of, the, of august 2nd we'll be able to give a better indication of what our viewpoint is on the launch timing um, like i said earlier if if testing just isn't really there uh, then the reality is that we have to kind of redirect some of our development resources, but um, optimistically we'll be able to give a, a more reasonable uh, kind of launch time frame and and we're still optimistic that's in you know late summer time time, but we'll have to it, it really is dependent on the next uh, 30 days of open beta to see where we're at and see if there's you know issues that that exist in in systems, which I'm sure that there are, but there's uh, you know, there's definitely a difference between a bug in a system and like a, a, a design failure for a system. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm like 200 messages behind. So let me go through the pins real quick. Uh, all right. So jumping up. So I answered the question on the, the NWNX function for the naming. So it is an NWNX function. It's a, a name override. Um, the from a technical standpoint, it just had to be updated whenever someone logs in or whenever someone uh, activates a disguise. So it's basically just 
iterating through all the players in the module um, and then giving them uh, basically a, a name update for that, that individual. Uh, let's see. Okay, that one got answered. Does this work on NPCs? So that's the name override. It does not work on NPCs. That will be something we can maybe consider. That's an interesting idea. Right now, it's PC only. Um, does it give problems with disguise? I think that was kind of covered. So it's basically disguise and name override are integrated. And then disguise takes precedence over the name override unless the um, observer uh, beats the, the disguise roles. Uh, let's see. Portraits get hidden? I think so. Maybe not. I will have to check that. So there's a question on do portraits get hidden in examination parties while disguised? Um, I want to say I did update that. However, I don't know for sure. So I will, I will leave that one up and I'll, I'll come back to you on that one. Uh, let's see, does tanking system work? Um, I would say yes with an asterisk. There's probably still some little quirks that, are, that need to be uh, taken care of and considered. So to give you an example, um, the current way that it works is kind of challenging for tanks to manage threat of uh, when with a spellcaster because the spellcaster generates the threat as kind of an AOE around them regardless of the spell they cast, um, which is partially intended because, you know, if even typically if you're going through a dungeon, you're going to try and target spellcasters that the enemy has. So it's kind of the same concept reverse. Um, but the problem right now is that the tanks have no way to handle like multiple melee um, combatants from a, a threat standpoint. So that is something that's that is a known challenge, but for the most part, the, the system is working. Uh, let's see, what does spot sense motive do? So we'll come back to that one. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll wrap that into the, um, the dev update for June because that'll have details on that. Uh, which classes get spot and sense motive? Again, that way, we may have that in the dev update, but that should be listed on each of the class, um, class wiki pages. Uh, will we be able to change hats in game? Um, yes, that is something that's being worked on. So right now it is tailor specific. Um, however, the objective is to allow a command for a smaller number of changes from an accessory standpoint. We don't want we don't want players to be able to just swap in and suddenly change their entire you know face and skin color and appearance, especially if it was set early on, because it's almost like you know crafting a new disguise or a new persona. Um, but there will be some pieces such as hats and just general accessories that will be able to be swapped in um, or, or edited without the need of a tailor. Uh, let's see, can the fringe be different colors from the main hair? Yes, that is the case. So you can, um, you can have pretty much either color. You might have to play a little bit with the, uh, when you select like the color for each, there's just with the way the system works, it has to be kind of timed properly, but, I think I've got it in a position where it'll do it. It'll do it the right way. You just have to kind of learn the system a little bit. Uh, let's see. How will hats, et cetera, cooperate with helmets? Uh, so s same concept is they, they probably both can be activated right now, um, but that's not intended. We do not want you to be able to wear a hat and a helmet at the same time. Uh, so that'll be uh, taken care of either before open beta or early, early on in that process. Uh, let's see, will, you be, will we be able to assign disguises to slots so we can save these changes of a disguise and then switch back to it easily? Um, yes, I mean, that's, that's basically how the disguise system is going to work, is you will have essentially an appearance for your disguises, and you'll have an appearance for um, your standard appearance. And so each slot will be, will be saved. Um, you'll have to... It, you'll have to kind of re-edit your disguise if you want. If like if your disguise is consistently failing, you'd probably want to go in and, and change the appearance because that's kind of the point of the disguise. Uh, let's see what kind of clothing options are we looking at. Um, every clothing option is being redone, uh, so the answer is a lot. Yeah, so clothing, uh, clothing, armor, weapons. All of that is going to be uh, custom tailored for TDN. Uh, let's see. When will DMs be selected? Um, what's the plan for setting up the DM team as well as training for server setting specifics? 
Um, that is that will take place after we have identified what our launch time frame is. Um, part of the challenge right now is we don't want to do it too early because then DMs might just be hanging out, kind of waiting for things to happen, and then you know before we know it, we think we have X number of DMs ready to go, um, but then in reality they you know might have personal life stuff come up and then they're not available. So we don't want to we don't want to communicate, hey, we've got you know. 10 DMs or 15 DMs across every time zone and then come launch because it takes, you know, longer than expected or whatever the case might be, we have fewer. So uh, we're just trying to get the timing on that right. So that way it's it's less of a surprise. Um, are there DM sponsored factions there? Maybe. Um, the, the goal early on is to make sure that the factions can kind of be self-supporting. Um, if we have the DM bandwidth, then we will have DMs that pay attention to specific factions. Um, however, we don't like one, one of the failures that we had last time is that the factions rely completely on DM interaction. And um, what like there's a myriad of issues that came from that. Like you had uh, you had factions getting more attention than others because there was a DM assigned to it. So they you know naturally had more quests and events happening. Um, you know, the, the other aspect is it's it's a lot to do. So if you're doing the just the the faction events alone, then you're not doing anything that are non-faction. And so um so basically it's it's just one of those things that we want to make sure there's a good balance between the two and we don't want to have all of our DM events taking place in this the faction environment. We want to be able to have them um bal as balanced as possible. But as you can imagine, you know, us having uh I think at the time it was six factions or seven factions and trying to split, you know, already stretched DMs to accomplish that was just not, not realistic and not healthy. Uh, let's see, are the main settlements and server going to be set in Alm, uh, Thier, maybe both? So, um, yeah, it, <laughs> right now it's Alm. So I, uh, I will address this real quick. So I, I know that obviously the server's name is the Dragon's Neck and technically uh, the launch geography is in the sword belt which is north of the dragon's neck for those that are um, unfamiliar with with the the mapping um the the goal is to lead into the actual peninsula and areas of the dragon's neck so that is uh, a goal it is not where we'll be at launch and so the launch geography is going to be uh moran to trade meet um we're still assessing whether the you know the Bross expansion, which we did include, is going to be reasonable to take care of from a narrative standpoint and from a system standpoint. We don't want to uh, oversaturate the server with more areas, which is something that we did uh, when we first went down, as we basically loaded in a ton of areas that had uh, nothing except for dungeons in them for the most part. So we're just we're being careful from that standpoint, but for sure Moran, for sure Trade Meet, those will be in. Um, there's a lot of just area additions that have been made and, and enhancements or i shouldn't say area additions just area enhancements we, we haven't added too many overland areas to the server um, but what we have done is completely overhauled moran so if you had if you were like 99 percent of the rest of the community who got lost in that city uh, it should be uh, much easier to navigate uh there will be you know just basic concept things like map pins and road signs and things like that to help you around um so that's that hopefully answers that question, but that is, uh, it will be primarily an on, but because of the, you know, setting changes that we've put in place, the, the sword belt, which, which is an on is, uh, kind of fractured from the main country. And so much of the, um, much of the kind of the political turmoil that's going on has to do with the fact that there's not like a direct political link between Moran in particular with the rest of, uh, rest of that country. Um, let's see. Uh, what about recording of gameplay? We're allowed to record a streamer still playing on TDN. Um, we haven't... Will there be video? We haven't fully addressed that. I would say it's one of those things where it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if there's if there are people who, who want to stream, I would say that's that's less of an issue. But then when you when people start making you know, out of character decisions because they want to appease their audience, then that becomes more of an issue. So um, I don't think we have currently a, a specific ruling on that. So that'll be something that I'll have to come back to and, and give some more clarity on. 
Uh, let's see, disguise self spell or all skill based. Right now it's skill based, but I, there's always a possibility of there being another option just from from spells, especially with just the changes to like the illusion, uh, sp like wizard subclass or not subclass, the uh, specialist school. So there's definitely some options from that standpoint. Um, the uh, why expertise feet remove uncanny dodge two still exists. Uh, expertise was um, becoming more of a challenge to just balance some of those pieces around. And so, it, if if you were here during our first kind of run, expertise became an issue because we started seeing extremely um, exaggerated AC values. Uh, so that's kind of the the comment behind that. And and I and you will see, especially as we go into some of the the kind of dungeon changes. Um, that have taken place and that also will continue to take place um, over you know the open beta time is that the objective is to have you know ch challenging dungeon experiences but um, just I mean my perspective on the AC element is it's less it's less fun to miss like 90% of your hits and so um, that's kind of some of the thought process behind expertise is pretty much every single uh, class that was tanking had to have expertise and that we had to basically build the fights around that AC piece, which is what became a challenge. Uh, let me try and scroll down. There were a few people that asked about um, recording, so that will... Um, there will be a recording for this. Let's see if I miss anything else. Uh, let's see. Players being able to record RP and gameplay. Yeah, that, that's, that is... Uh, so Dread Gazebo asked that, or mentioned that one about recording. I think it's a it's a valid concern, so I think that's why we have to have some kind of process in place. Um, you know, if in the event that people just don't want to have that happening. Uh, do can I think? I think that almost covers it. Um, so we have about twelve minutes left, and I'll I'll try and see if there's any any other questions that do come in. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of people join since we started, so. Uh, what I will do, I'm going to end the stream for just a moment, and I may have to pick it back up. Right, I'm going to check some Discord channels to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So, um, what I will do is... I may just follow... No, oh, Dan is in game. I will probably just follow him around. So I'm going to end the stream real quick and log back in as a DM so I can be a little bit faster, and then I will just bounce around with Dan. So hold tight for just a moment. Pretty exciting stuff, gotta be honest. Pretty exciting. Let's just uh, clear something up here. Okay. That's I... So I'm, I'm gonna bounce around. Hopefully everyone can see this, the screen again. I know it was uh, having an issue the first time. So this is, uh, I want to say this is an updated area, um, but this is the Gray Shear area, which uh, I think uh, Calliope is the one that, that made this one. Um, but this is, yeah, this was expanded because before I think it was a really small area, so you can see just the, in the distance the, the spot that's there. So we've for, for anyone that hasn't either seen the screenshots um, or has, has not really been uh, in-game before, there's a ton of time that goes into the areas that are built on the server. Um, all of these uh, objects that you can kind of see in the distance are, I want to say they're all placeables that are placed off the map, so that way um, it's it gives kind of a nice uh, just perspective on, on those visuals. But even just from the standpoint of the, of, you know, the rest of the area, I mean, this is 
this is definitely one of the nicer areas, but it's pretty darn consistent um, with the rest of the server. And then we're going to follow. So we're going to row over to the island. There we go. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a really nice visual there. I, I don't think we'll go through Moran just yet uh, today, but once you're once you're server side, I highly recommend you go through and take a look at, at Moran. Um, but you can hopefully kind of see just everything from the, just the build quality standpoint on the server is uh, just outstanding. I know just personally, this is not my, my skill set, but uh, just really well done from the work that's gone into it. Uh, for those that are curious from a technical standpoint, I mean, pretty much all of it's placeables. Um, and there really isn't too much of a, I mean, there, there's kind of hit, hit and miss performance issues, um, but those are not necessarily have anything to do with the placeable quantity. It's more to do with just models that aren't compiled or, you know, there's, there's assets from 15 years ago at this point that are in game that, you know, weren't built properly back then, or at least that, you know, their, um, their quality doesn't, or their, not quality, but their, uh, like the guts of that that type of model build are not the same as what they are now. Yeah, so get, yeah, get, give credit to Calliope on that one because they did a, a great job just building that. If I'm lucky, I will crash as I'm loading right now. May have crashed. We shall see. I'm, oh, there we go. So this is the so this is all basically on that island that you saw from the distance. Um, yeah, I think Dan mentioned it, but slower load times are are going to be a thing that there will be. An improvement to that because I, I do um, uh, thanks to uh, LB if anyone's familiar with with uh, one of the the people that are running the NWIC project has a uh, basically a a, a non NWN script that's going to help compile all the models which is one of the, the reasons that we have challenges from a load time standpoint but you can see just again kind of the the qual the time that went into the areas that are in here um for those that have been in the tool set regularly like this should be pretty clear you know how how many placeables are really in the area um it's you know you see like the the sunlight coming in um and just just like little things like the coloring of the sunlight that's coming through compared to the sunlight on the other side i mean there's just so much that that went into i mean all, all of these pieces so uh, just really a, a fantastic job. And there's going to be um, one of the things that we've added as well as kind of is uh, dynamic placeables. So if we, we could have, uh, just to give you an example, you could have um, like sunlight or rays that come through, like, so this happens in our caravans, but if you have sunlights or sun rays that come through at a particular part of the day, once it hits another part of the day, those rays go away and then you can have new rays that come back like from the opposite side, sort of simulate the uh, um, the the sun changing direction or anything like that. Uh, let's see. So this oh goat herd pass. This is one of the I think this is one of the the screenshots that went up um, as well. But this is another just uh, really great area just from like the especially nature visuals that are on there um, or that are that are here. So again like especially the overland is just super well put together you have just different uh different spots that you're able to find kind of those nice like screenshot zones for your play for your character and the nice thing with with um the improvements to the character models is it now can kind of match or or not even match but it kind of exceed the area quality and in a lot of cases is you'll be able to have an actual character that whose appearance from a quality standpoint, um, you know, matches and exceeds the quality of the area building. Whereas with um, 
how it was before is we would have the area building quality, but we wouldn't really have, we wouldn't, not even really, we, we wouldn't have the, the quality of the characters. And so now to be able to have both of those is, is just amazing. So, and for those that there's a, there's a setting you can select to scroll out more if anyone's curious, because I think there's usually a, a max on it, but you can just see that like the, what's it called? Is it a Vista? Is that what the name is? But just the, the view of the scenery is, is great. Um, Sam, I will have to get back to you on that. I don't really, I don't remember. The, I think it's in settings.tml. You have to open that up in a, a Word doc. And I think you have to make those, uh, make those changes. Um, are there secret layers for more for me to scheme from? There, there are. So what what I will tell you. So I, I was hoping to be able to to demo this system, but um, basically for context, we we have a, a custom dialogue system, and because we've made changes and things like that, it, it broke one other thing, which I'm going to be fixing this week. But basically, one of one of the pieces that we'll be including, and Dan, I'll jump to you in just a second, but. Um, one of the the systems that we'll have is is persistent placeables and so there's going to be placeables that you can you you can purchase and then you can go and use them and they're categorized so you can have like let's say fence for example you can have different versions of a fence and you can edit it and kind of similar to the um similar to the accessory system you can change this you know you can scale it rotate it all that type of stuff you can't color it obviously like hopefully that is hopefully obvious just because of how um assets work uh for neverwinter nights placeables but you could you could theoretically kind of build out a cave to a degree um the only caveat is obviously if there's uh, a dungeon in there there those encounters will respawn so if if you wanted something beyond that that would be kind of a that that would when you would have to get with the dm and you'd have to have that conversation to figure out if that's a, a, a realistic approach but you can definitely go and you can kind of build up your own um, your own camp, or you can go up and build kind of like a, a mini a mini fort in some cases. Um, all those will be options. Uh, let's see. Let me let me jump over to Dan real quick before before I keep going. <clears throat> Yeah, housing is a thing, and and I would um, I would call it I would call it property because you could it is housing, but you could also kind of use the the property for any purposes that you want. So if you if you found like an estate that you had the funds to purchase, you could use that estate for really anything. So you could do you could do um, a business, you could do a temple, you could do any of those types of things. Uh, the housing system itself is basically it's going to be rent based and so you have a certain amount of month that you need to pay in and you could pay in advance so you could basically fund you know multiple months out if you needed to um it's all the properties are going to or well the property that's purchased is only linked to one person so you can't you can't share the ownership but you can you can make new keys you can share the keys you can rekey the property um if you have some kind of issue um I would be very surprised if there is a housing drought, uh, primarily because us making the, the the process to make properties is very simple because we don't need to dress the properties. Um, we can leave that essentially to the players because you can go and decorate your property however you want because we're going to have persistent placeables to use. Will there be limit to property ownership? Um, I would say we, we will implement one if it becomes a major issue. Well, let me showcase. I'm getting too I'm getting too into the questions, but here's another spot in the uh, the large forest that is near the server. I unfortunately cannot throw Dan over the edge. This tile set is this this is um uh, I cannot think of the name. It's a really common tile set. It's one that's been out for a while. Um, yes, 
worms. It is worms seasonal tile set. And if I'm like 98% sure. But yeah, you can see even at some point I'll have to log into the tool set and just show like the difference between an area that has the placeables active and one that doesn't because it's it's a pretty massive difference. Um, actually, I could probably do that right now. So I'll I'll load that up while we while we continue to kind of bounce around. And then I know we're we're uh, I think we're just over an hour right now, but we'll continue to kind of jump around and answer some questions. So here's another one. So this is yeah another one right in the forest. So you've got just the again kind of back to the visuals. I think I have my sound turned off right now for for everyone tonight, at least the music. But that's another piece that's going to be in and um for those that uh might have missed it the the music that was on that uh teaser trailer whatever you'd like to call it uh again that was done by bruce um who if if you're familiar he also did the uh the scars of risen home soundtrack um which was amazing and so he was uh, kind enough to put put that together for us um so yeah, just again, uh, really great work, and and the music is going to be, uh, you know, it's it's always a huge focus for us when we build some of these pieces. Um, we try and go as as all out as we possibly can. Jumping over to you, Dan. Here is a home that obviously has nothing wrong with it. Oh, my camera's you know, all over the place. Let me go. There we go. That's a better, better view. But yeah, there's there's numerous areas that are kind of similar to this where um, they're open and available and. Uh, you know, er early on, although there wasn't a lot of things inside the server, that was kind of one of the aims is to to allow players to to you know find things to use and and become more part of the server. But that was definitely something that we uh, did not succeed in early on. I am going to see if I can open up. I think trade meet would probably be a good example of just like the the placeable quantity um, and give a, a good example. Um, yeah, we can do we can do some more of those uh, interiors, Dan. Some of them around interiors. That sounds good. Shout out to Dan for uh, being flexible and, and touring us around with basically zero notice. All right, once uh, we'll look at, at probably one more and then I'll just bounce over to the tool set to show the tool set um, kind of visual of, actually I'll open up a few areas there that way it's, more apparent let's do we'll do gray shear we did um so you'll see kind of in the area name at the top we did rename the areas in moran so i know that probably was might be a little bit confusing at first for those that were here before, but um, I, I promise that once you're actually kind of run around, it, it will make more logical sense from a city perspective. Yep, uh, very good point. So there will be um, a, a job system that is in. Uh, it is, uh, I would say, 80% finished at the moment because we kind of have to wrap in some other pieces, but um, we do have uh, some pieces that will allow not not just your typical um, like adventuring 
jobs. It's going to be stuff that you can just do inside the city. Um, it's, it's intended to be definitely much more engaging and, and give you, and yeah, definitely shout out to, uh, uh, DS as, is what I think we refer to him as, but, um, he's done a great job kind of put, putting the core of that together, but that's going to be involved in this area in particular is where you would go to and, and get some of those jobs and, and expectations. So you'd be able to earn funds for those or for, from whatever job you're doing. So what, uh, w one thing that I will mention, uh, as, as you go around, obviously there's, there's NPCs that aren't visible and, and um, most of the, well, a, a big effort over the next few months up until launch is really the implementation of all of the narrative pieces. And so um, quests and uh, things like points of interest, which we'll have more de details on later, um, really just that the main story um, story aspects are all going to be uh, kind of hidden during open beta because we don't want to we don't want to spoil um, we, we, we don't really want to spoil anything but the reality is we have to test and so we're going to um, yeah we're, we're going to basically be hiding some of that until we fully launch so that way there's there's pieces in there that are uh, still kind of new and unknown for people is a hen or halfling bakery that's built there is obviously some scaling issues that we'll, we will work out um because of one, one thing we did is we adjusted some of the body models to to uh make things a little bit easier from a implementation standpoint for some of our armors and just other visuals so um, we have to have a manual scaler that that uh sets some of that but yeah this is a a bakery that's in Moran. It's in the main kind of uh, city center, which is um, now called Joaqu Joaquin's Walk, where I, whereas that used to be an interior kind of bazaar, and then now it's uh, an exterior bazaar, and then also have access to these other areas. Uh, I'm going to try and catch some of the questions that have been asked let's see so give me just one second all right so the sorry about that but the um Let's see, interested in the permadeath, Wiki does not answer all, unfortunately, how will good versus evil uh, be handled for leveling, and Wiki does it seems like it would be beneficial to hunt low-level evil characters or permadeath them. Um, how will the uh, balance of good and evil be managed if this is the case? Um, I don't know if I would view it as, as beneficial to hunt the low-level evil characters, because, you know, part, part of... Like, that there's no expectation that just because someone is a particular class means that they're going to be like sold out and like removed from the face of the server. So and what I mean what I mean by that is there's um there's a dip there's a different a different role or a more uh challenging role from the spellcraft standpoint. So just because you know someone casts something in front of a player, they may not be able to identify it um the same way they might have might have been able to before. So that that's one element. And that that typically kind of leans into the Dread Necromancer and the Blighter classes. Um, you know, now if someone is do, like doing something right in front of you that warrants immediate action and warrants um, PvP, then you know that's that's going to be kind of subjective in nature on how that how that's going to go based on the circumstance. But 
there's not necessarily a a benefit to it um, from the standpoint of the the person completing the execution doesn't really get much from that process. Now, the person who is executed, and if they uh, go through the whole um, time frame of of how long they're executed and they're not raised, then that person is eligible for the permadeath rewards, and so they could roll um, a new a new character that has uh, a more they start off higher level than than what they typically would. So you can allocate those those details as you you see fit. Um, that said, we are definitely like going to be monitoring that system very very closely. The objective is not to turn into you know like basically a, a murder hobo server where that's happening constantly. Um, you know that's like that that those type of situations are meant to drive a, a, a narrative and a story. And if it's just like like completely unwarranted PvP that's happening constantly, then it's going to be something that we have to um, address pretty quickly because we don't want to lean into that. If it's if it's story driven and there's purpose behind it, that's that's why there's stages to the PvP. You know, there, you can have the sub duel, you can have standard PvP where you know someone is, um, I mean, essentially not like not knocked out, but it's it's a stage below the execution piece, and then you have the final piece, and so. If you get to that final piece, then that's kind of, in my mind, you know, the, the more, like, the story has gone, kind of gone, run its course, like, the story's reached completion, um, whereas with some of the others, it's like, you know, there's, there could be reasons that you don't go to that, that step. Um, let me, I want to make sure I answered all that, so how... Uh, so the balance of good and evil, it seems like there's going to be quite a few... Um, evil characters probably at, at start, but the reality is if there's things that are happening from those characters that run antithetical to like the morality of of Moran and trade meat, then there's you know there's an argument to be had that those characters may not last that long. So we definitely view classes like Dread Necromancer, like the Bly uh, Blighter class, as more of a hardcore experience, and so we uh, we, we I would just say expect to, you know, potentially have characters get, you know, permakilled or retired because of, you know, if, if they're just causing wanton havoc, then that's kind of the direction that we're going to go with that. Uh, let's see. I'd love to hear more about how the applications have been have changed regarding base classes. Um, yeah, so there, there's there's no applications. Um, they are all completely removed, so you can play. Uh, the, the only restrictions you have are the ones that are implemented by either alignment or class or race or any of those types of things. So it's all mechanical. Um, but that's that's really what's available now. So applications are done away with, um, and we try and come up with solutions that don't require the application process. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, obviously what the impact of that is uh, long term. Same with the changes to buff durations. Uh, how hard is it to find a resting place as a caster? So it was very difficult before to find resting places. That is a problem that we had. Uh, that should be um, easier moving forward. We, we have, I will tell you that we have not yet put that kind of full solution into place, but the intention is to allow uh, like mobile camp um, options for like non-dungeon areas. And so before you had to go find those spots and Obviously, there's going to be a cost associated with those that is is reasonable because resting is a, a pretty big uh, kind of buff for especially caster classes. Um, but that will be an option that's out there. Uh, resting was again was a challenge, and we've uh, we've made adjustments just to to both kind of buff durations, and we've also made adjustments to how how uh, then resting will be available. It, it still won't be like hey, I can just go rest whenever I want, but it will be uh, I would say more. <laughs> excuse me, more available than what, what it was before. Uh, so with permadeath, yeah, so um, for uh, Dred Gazebo's question, that's, that is just something that we'll keep a very close eye on. The, the intent is to have it as, um, you know, a, a, an option, and it is, just to be transparent, it is currently, um, an option for an attacker to take. Uh, there is 
op there are options to avoid that. Obviously, if you have you know friends who are able to go get your body and then raise you, there is a time limit on that. And I would say that it's also important to um, you know involve the DMs in the process as much as possible because we get we do have notifies that come to the DM team when it comes to um, like those PvP moments and executions in particular because that's something that we. Uh, or, you know, not looking to have happen on like a constant basis where we have to go and try and mitigate those those situations and make sure that we're that it's all kind of on the up and up. Um, but things like just you know random ganks and and those types of behaviors are not acceptable. Uh, let's see. Another question. So with Blighter and Dread Necro, their unique spell, can only other Blighters, Blighters and Dread Necromancers know the spells, or can a good high-level spellcaster understand them? Um, the So a higher-level spellcaster can understand them. That's where that spell, um, the spellcraft role is going to become more into effect. So the, I don't think we have a wiki up for, or wiki page up for this yet, so that's something that we'll need to do. Um, but the the wiki what i'm losing my train of thought so the spellcraft is is more difficult than before and so once you identify it then the the person that's identifying the spell name is basically going to know kind of the intent behind the spell and, and where it's sort of it's essentially coming from so with that said that's when things can kind of play out differently but but the challenge is going to be you know you might see like kind of a spooky effect but that doesn't necessarily mean the person is is evil like there's there's spell effects that that are going to look a little bit spookier than spookier than others um and so that's where it's going to get a little bit you know subjective based on the morality of the character that observes it the situation at hand like some of those pieces that 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 go into that um so it's it's hard to give kind of a flat answer of you know here's how each situation should should play out if you observe you know x spell being cast um, but there's, you know, there's intent that's involved, there's the, you know, situation, there's, um, you know, if you see someone that's just raising a bunch of undead, then you pretty much, you have a pretty good idea of, like, what their intent is, that it's not probably a very good one. Um, and that's why, you know, classes like Dread Necromancer and others are going to be more of a hardcore class, because it, it intentionally, their class, some of their class strength is tied to uh, doing things that are that out them and so when you look at dread necromancer they have like the uh the deathly awakening and they have some of these things that are not you know obviously um pen and paper abilities um but they're designed to you know if, if you want to have a dread necromancer at full strength then they'll have to be doing these things on a regular basis which you know if they get caught doing it then that's going to be a pretty serious thing because having accusations of necromancy and, and um you know uh, uh animating the undead it are going to be significant so um that's you know one thing to keep in mind from that perspective around the, the spell casts hopefully I'm, I'm answering some of the questions while i'm trying to bounce through these let's see um doo -doo -doo. there's a couple of rules sorry as i just kind of scan through i'm gonna probably i'll, I'll jump i'm gonna jump over to dan real quick Dan did mention it, but just so everyone knows, there are going to be um, completely unique uh, faction headquarters for the factions that are in game. So you'll be able to go visit those. Um, there are some that are going to be more secretive than others for obvious reasons. Um, but there's definitely uh, on on that streaming piece. Just just to comment is. It will definitely like even if we say you know it, it's available, it's still going to be left up to DM discretion because we to Dan's point, we don't want to spoil, we don't want to spoil things. And so if there's you know if there's some kind of nefarious plan going on with maybe it's Greywell or you have some other um, some other kind of plan that's going on that's you know running antithetical to another another faction, you don't want to have that information that's just like pushed out there. Um, because it's gonna it's gonna ruin that, you know the, the I'm losing track of the words that I'm saying. But basically, it's just gonna it's gonna lose the spice of that. 
So this is the, uh, I think it's a low dog, right? Low dog L house uh, that was put together and uh, Cash, it was by Cash Builder, did a great job putting this together and sprucing it up. My camera does not want to cooperate with me today. There, there is, um, I think Barky might have just mentioned it, but there is one thing to just comment on is the objective kind of longer term is that some of the uh, bigger events that are more server wide do have either videos or streaming or something that's associated with those. So that way that can be kind of a, a method of storytelling for the server. Um, but it's, it's obviously one of those things that we have to just manage carefully and we'll probably have um, people that are uh specifically elected to do that so whether whether that's something like we wouldn't we don't want it to be a secret with whoever's involved and so we want to just make sure we it's going to be just an interesting thing to to handle and deal with and get a, a proper solution for so this is again one of the ale houses that's in in uh in moran And then Dan, I think we'll go about uh, eight more minutes, and then I think we're gonna we're gonna close it off because I'll probably close with just showing the the tool set piece real quick because I don't think I, I haven't jumped to that yet. So maybe about an area or two more. This is um, an example of the uh, housing. So this is an apartment complex. So you can see if if you see my mini map that's up right now, uh, there's quite a few uh, different areas inside this apartment complex. And so you have, uh, let's see, I haven't looked at housing for a while. So if this breaks, it breaks. Yeah, it breaks. Um, so actually it's because I'm a DM. So basically the way that it works from a housing perspective is you can interact with the placeable and then you can receive options on whether you wanna purchase the property or what you wanna do with it. And so that's, uh, you know, if you purchase it, you get, um, you get the property deed and you have options with the property deed that you can use. And again, you can use the property really however you want um, within reason. If you're using it as like a sacrificial chamber, then that's going to cause some problems. So actually, I'll pop into some of these. Uh, so D Dan did mention, oh, you can actually see some of our, some of our fun tests with the, the placeable system. So you can see some of the things that we're just sticking out. So these will all be cleared up, um, especially before we hit launch. But these are all these were all uh, player placed, and so they've they've persisted since they were put in. <laughs> so those are still there. Um, but yeah, so some will have uh, different tiers of properties, so you'll be able to have uh, just different amenities that are in there that are that are pre-built, and then you can add in you know the, the placeable element as well. We'll do, I think we'll look at this courtyard and then I will open up the tool set just to kind of show that that variance. And then I wish I'll bid everyone to do. I know there's many people that are on that it's either very, very early, very, very late. And thank you for, for taking the time uh, today or tonight or this morning to, to hop on with us. So this is a courtyard that that apartment complex is attached to. So players that, that have uh, purchases inside the apartment complex will have access to this um, as just a nice little getaway area. All right. Yep, I will... Um, I'm going to swap my screen to the tool set real quick just to give everyone a quick example. Uh, let's change windows. Okay. So hopefully you can see my tool set right now. I'm actually going to, can someone just give me a yes or no if they can see the tool set? 
Okay, perfect. So just to give you an example of, of how, this is the gray shear area. And so, oh, the tool set decided to ruin me. The gray shear was too much. But basically, I, I'm, I'll try and get it back open. Let's see if I can do that. The joys of using the tool set. I wouldn't be surprised if it's because I had pretty much probably our two most heavy placeable areas open at the same time. So we shall see in just a moment. Yeah, to answer the question on the breaking in, that's not currently planned. We will have persistent storage. Um, oh, thank you for that information. That is good to know. I will do that then. Give me just a moment. Okay, I will share my desktop in just a second once I open it up. I did not know that. Thank you for that uh, tip there. I'm pretty sure the only like obscene thing that might be seen is just like terrible code. That'd probably be it. Uh, so screen, screen two. Okay. Hopefully you can see the tool set again. All right. So I will, just to give you an example, so the, the area itself is not as big as it, it seems. Like if you, if you look right here, this is where the area ends, if you see the red tiles. And so I will deactivate placeables. And so that's basically the area. Let me take off the music. So this is the area um, from a tile set standpoint. And so when you go and activate, and this might blow up my tool set, but once you activate it, it loads everything back in. So you've got the, the area out in the distance. Um, trade meet is going to be pretty similar. I have reduced some of the placeables in trade meet, but trade meets one of those that's just a bit of a challenge um, because there's there's primarily from the pathing of NPCs combined with the number of placeables that are in the area. Um, trade meet, same thing. I'll I'll zoom in a little bit. And then placeables. So no placeables. Placeables. You can see the waypoints that are all in there. So um, yeah, that's just kind of an example of of the quantity of placeables that are available or that are inside of a server. Um, so that's. That's pretty much it. So I will go ahead and, and kind of end it there. I will go back and try and grab any questions that, that weren't answered. Um, but we're, we're very excited for open beta to start. We know there's going to be things that we'll still have to adjust and to, uh, and to fix. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we're, we're very passionate about the project. Obviously, there's a ton of work that, that's been going into it, um, but we're trying to really create uh, a next level experience for players. Uh, we want to make it engaging and fun and, and we want to you know, have kind of a true to setting approach. Um, open beta is, is this Saturday is when it starts. So it kicks off at, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so you can go and run whatever time, I don't know the term, time swapper, whatever it is to, to get that information. Um, but yeah, we're, we're excited. So thank you again. Uh, if you have more questions, you know, feel free to, you can throw them in, in this live stream chat for a while. Um, we may keep it up for a bit, but uh, we, we may end up doing more of these, um, especially as we head closer to launch, as we get some of the, the systems uh, really kind of lined up pretty well. Um, but yeah, thank you all. And, and I will uh, bid you all good day or good, good evening or good morning. And I'm sure that we will talk soon, but thank you.
And so our little journey ends. And in a way begins. Well, interesting. Um, before I finish off this little video, I will just see if they want any of the ve the developers to speak in the channel. Otherwise, we'll call the chair. If anyone else has any questions, but yes, it is looking fantastic. Um, can't say I did very much to get it here, but. I think a lot of the fruits of my own work will be coming soon. But thank you guys for joining in with this little live stream. Let's see what Ashen said. I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. Thanks, everybody. Yep, have a good night, good day, whatever. I don't have permission. Thanks for showing up. Typical favoritism. Anyways, hope you guys are 